Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Derek and Bethany React, where we react to uh, real estate shows, uh, movies, uh, things that you guys actually like to watch, things that you might not have ever heard of, and we just tell you if it's realistic or not, and it's all things about real estate. So, oh, is that it? That's all I do, right? Do I do more? Also, if you like this or any of our other shows, please, please comment and let us know that you like them and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Today we're watching Selling Sunset, season two, episode three. Let's get started. A pocket listing is interesting. It does reduce our marketing expenses, but I'm also concerned about how a pocket listing overpriced like this could affect the reputation of the brokerage. So with a pocket listing, you, your marketing expenses are a lot lower than non-existent. I mean, basically it's the work of the agent or it's the work of uh, the seller to get people into the property to at least view the property, uh, mainly with other agents and just say, hey, mm -hmm. you know, do you have anybody, are you interested? It's phone calls just asking, hey, I have a listing that might be coming up. Would this price entice you or no? And their worry is, if we price the house way too high, the reputation of the brokerage will be diminished. Um, where, oh, they price their stuff too high just because they think they are, you know, whatever. And he doesn't want that. And I get that from his point, but for her, um, I also understand where she's coming from as a negotiation piece to uh, market this as a, without marketing it as a pocket listing to try and get more people in to see it. Because if it's a $2 million house that should be a million, you now are, overpriced yeah. by hundred yeah. percent, like it's, it's ridiculous. And that would be a waste of time. Or if it's a 12, I think it was $12 million listing when it should be worth what, nine or 10, mm -hmm. that could be a huge waste of time as well. So I understand both sides. So disclaimer, the state is different. It might be different from their state. All states have different laws and regulations. So I, I can't speak to what they have, but yeah, that's just a disclaimer. I, I think that we can. Well, we have to agree on this. You can't just do it. I want to make a coffee. Yeah, I, I will say, he said, you can't just agree. You can't just list a property. So, as an agent, we are licensed affiliate brokers of a brokerage. So we hang our license under a brokerage. In this case, this brokerage is the Oppenheim Group. So, what he's saying is, is that unless he signs off on it, mm -hmm. as the broker, I'm assuming he's the managing broker, even the owner. If everything has to funnel through him, it's the brokerage that's taking on the listing and they're designating her as the agent to sell that listing. Uh, so she's just pitching it to them. So I understand that it's, it is on his call, mm -hmm. right? They can't, she can't just say I'm listing a property unless she leaves and goes somewhere where a brokerage will allow her to list it for that price. So I get and what I you're saying. And I think in prior episodes, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, um, she talked about like maybe even leaving. Yeah. Broke, like she was, I was like, I may leave the brokerage. This this may, you know, make me leave. Yeah, and that's the case. I mean, that's the biggest listing they've ever had. It's the biggest mm -hmm. listing she's ever had. Mm -hmm. um, could make or break her career. But a if client, it's worth a shot, future yeah. Future client, past client. That it's huge. Thing, so so well, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, me too. I would have cut my mouth and I appreciate that. Well, you don't. No, I actually don't. Well, then don't say you do. I think people should mind their own business. <laughs> so I know there's a lot of drama and everything going on right here, but one thing that this does remind me of is tough conversations. Um, I think it's important that, especially in real estate, uh, especially if you're a realtor, of course, and you have something go wrong. Like for instance, I just had something go wrong on a deal last week uh, where financing fell through at the end of the two month close and it was a tough conversation that I had to have with an agent, but instead of waiting, you know, a day or two to, to talk to her, I called her immediately, told her the situation, came up with everything that I could that um, could help remedy the situation or the problem that we had. But I had to have the conversation. She was super upset, aggravated with me, even though none of it was my fault. It just happened to happen that way. And you have to have those tough conversations. It's extremely important uh, to do that. So I think just going to the source yeah. is, is important. Yeah the best way to go. What are your thoughts? I mean, of course I'd like to get more. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I think it's worth even five and a half. Are you, you, I don't know, didn't you just say something about like other brokerages had said five? And I'm not saying that you should just say five to say five. I'm not saying that. Like if it's four or five, you need to tell them the truth. 
Or you, you could put it up. You could, you know, you, maybe if you did like 4.595 or something like that. I, I think it's good that she stuck with it. Yeah. I, I just, he didn't seem happy and all of a sudden he seemed happy, but we don't know what was really happening. This is like a fake listing appointment. Is this real or not? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, it might be a little tweaked, I don't know. I think it is important to note that with investments and investors, investors, of course, they put in a lot of money, a lot of heart and soul. But we've said before on previous episodes that heart and soul doesn't really sell a property, yeah. right? It's the finishes, but they were talking about the finishes in this property and the things that he have done to um, increase the value of the property, which is great. Yeah. Um, but her to stick with, hey, look, based off of everything that I've come up with, this is where you're at, realistically, and just getting real with them and saying, look, we can price it just a tad higher just to see if we can get some more, but just understand this is where you really need to be. So setting those right expectations is important. I'm thinking like, like a zebra here. The zebra? Yeah. <laughs> so you walk you're, Wait, in. you're gonna have a real live zebra? I mean, yeah, I just wanna like chill. And then this is when you have stupid money. That's what I call it. Money to just throw at anything. What's the first thing you think about? Zebra. And I want a live one. <laughs> I want it just hanging out at my engagement party. Gah, stupid money. That's when you're just stupid rich. Is this realistic or not? Yes, it's selling sunset. We've talked about how realistic and not it is. Um, this actually had some pretty cool stuff in it that had to do with real estate. Sometimes these shows really get into like the drama so much mm -hmm. that you kind of lose sight of the fact that it's yeah. actual real estate show too. So it's pretty cool that they actually went through a, a listing appointment with a developer. That was a pretty cool point. Um, it also was important to uh, see the dynamic between broker and affiliate broker. I thought that was a really good yeah, one too. Yeah. So is pocket it pocket listings? Yeah. And pocket listings. I think it was a great episode and very realistic. Yes. Yes. If there are any shows or movies you'd like for us to react to, leave them in the comment section below. Bye. See you guys.